Hi there. Welcome to my review for East Memoirs Oath and Felgana. East Memoirs Oath and Felgana is a remaster of the 2005 remake of East 3 Wanderers from East. It was released in 1989 for the PC 8801. This was my first East title and moreover my first Falcom game. So naturally, playing a current remaster of this game on the Switch was a no brainer. Anyways, enough of the history and my history with the game, let's get into the review. East Memoirs Oath and Felgana begins with you on a boat landing at a dock, which honestly, Adol doesn't have much experience with. This man's middle name might as well be Shipwreck. Anyways, you dock in the land of Felgana, your pal Dogi's home country. Shortly after landing, you run into a girl named Elena. She's being attacked by wolves, so naturally, Adol being a hero, is obligated to save the damsel in distress. Now, this here Elena could be Adol's love interest, but we all know Adol's true love is an adventure. Adol's an independent adventure, he don't need no lady love. The story follows your typical demon summoning, summoning anime arc. Maguire and his right hand man Chester are trying to collect four statues to summon demon down the world as we know it, and Adol, I just casually run into gods on my daily walks, Kristen, has to save Redmont as he just has to say yes to anyone in need. The gameplay in East Memoirs of Felgana is very simplistic and basic. You have a button for a sword slash, you can combo up to 5 hits, this will be your main form of damage. There's also a rising slash performer by pressing attack while ascending from a jump, good for taking out those pesky birds. Also a downward stab that hits multiple times performed by pressing attack while descending. Works well against enemies that don't move much like poison spewing plants. This is why I don't touch grass. You have a button for magic spells, a fireball, a spinning sword cyclone, and a charge tackle. Obtained via normal story progression, once you get your first corresponding gem for that element, the spell can be charged for more damage or effect. Ruby for your fireball, emerald for your wind cyclone, and lastly topaz for your earth tackle. Each spell has 3 upgrades total. Magic spells use a self replenishing MP meter, which makes them more cooldown oriented as opposed to resources. Spells can be used not only for combat, but also to solve puzzles. You can use the fireball to light torches that open doors, just like Zelda. Or you can use a wind cyclone to cover distances that a normal jump cannot reach. Or you can use a tackle to crush walls. Sorry, Dogi, I got this. You are no longer needed. The game has three basic types of equipment, swords, armor, or shields. There are six pieces of each type of armor, or sword, or shield. All equipment can be obtained either in treasure boxes or through plot progression. Each piece can also be upgraded up to three times by collecting Ravel Ore. Early in the game, these are only found in treasure boxes, but... However, as you progress, enemies will start to drop it, letting you max out all your equipment. The game also has accessories that are used in certain situations. An amulet that protects against lava damage, a crystal that lights up dark areas, as well as a cloak that will heal you if you stand still, much like Ease 1 and 2. Speaking of which, does anyone else get bothered when people call the series Ys or YS? Just a pet peeve of mine. Anyway. The game has dungeons that play out like 3D platformers with enemies with a hand. Generally, the main goal is to navigate these dungeons and fight the boss, usually resulting in a new ability that allows you to access a new area. The game has two distinct types of bosses, agile human enemies, then more often than not play like a low-tier bullet hell, and giant godlike bosses that follow distinct patterns. Both require a different approach, and it keeps the game fresh. Both types of bosses are fun and can be quite difficult until you get the patterns down. New to the Switch version of Othin Felgana is speed up. By clicking on the right stick, you can increase the speed from 1 times to 1.5 and then again to 2 times speed. Personally, I used it when I need to grind a few levels. It's quite handy and it saved quite a bit of time. The Switch version runs at a higher resolution than the PSP and maybe PC version, and at a crisp 60 frames per second. I didn't notice any frame drops myself, but I'll be the first to admit that I'm not super familiar with spotting those types of frame drops. I want to say resolution is 720p in dock mode, but again, I'm not too sure. Um, I couldn't help, I couldn't find anything online with an exact frame rate or resolution. And again, new to the Switch version is new art for the portraits of the characters. There are over 30 portraits in the game, one for each NPC and main cast. Each one has been redrawn for this title. If you prefer the PSP and PC originals, you can also swap back to those if you'd like. The sprites and backdrops have been redrawn as well. And the art style holds up very well. This game is very visually appealing, nice and bright with very detailed sprites and backgrounds. Just like the newest patch for the PC Steam version, this version is fully voiced, albeit only in Japanese. It is an import title after all. 
This is the first time Adol has an actual voice, and it's really well done. Not only villains in the main cast have voices, but every NPC also has a voice. It breathes life into the world and makes the world much more accessible. The game normally uses the same soundtrack from the 2005 PC version. However, if you like, you can swap to either the, the PC Engine version or the Sharp X68K version from 1990. You, if you want that old school field, all soundtracks are unique in their own way. I especially like the PC Engine soundtrack. There's just something about those old soundtracks that bob. Overall, the music has that soft rock aesthetic to it. Some of my favorite tunes in the game are The Boy Who Had Wings, uh, Believe in My Heart, and Valestine Castle, which you can currently hear in the background. Those are just some of my favorites. The soundtrack is honestly 11 out of 10. There isn't a single bad tune, which is not uncommon when it comes to Falcom JDK. They're musical geniuses. The soundtrack honestly had me just sitting there and listening to the music instead of playing on numerous occasions. As for the length of the game, it definitely does not overstay its welcome, but it's not too short either. A typical playthrough will last you anywhere between 10 to 12 hours, depending on how much you get lost or struggle with bosses. There are times when it will require you to return to old dungeons with new bracelet abilities to find treasure or progress. Sometimes it's not exactly clear about this, Bob's amulet comes to mind, it is required to get the crystal to light up dark caves. However, the game doesn't really allude to this at all, so there's a chance you'll be running around wondering what you'll miss. Luckily, this doesn't happen very often. That is why you need to talk to NPCs. <laughs> the game is a comfortable length and has six different difficulties. Very easy, easy, normal, hard, nightmare, and inferno. The game is designed for replays with this new Game Plus mode, allowing you to start from the beginning with all your upgrades and levels. Inferno specifically is designed for new Game Plus. As this game has a very special place in my heart as it started my relationship with the developer and Ehon Falcom, it makes it difficult to say much about it in a negative light. E's Memoirs, Oath and Felgon is a great game, I love my experience with it this time around. If you are a fan of action RPGs in the vein of Zelda or Alundra, this is a great game to pick up and play. Have you played E's Oath and Felgon in any versions before? Leave a comment telling me about your experience with the game, and don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps me out. That's the meat and potatoes. I'll see you in the next video.